In Christianity, the word saint has three different but related meanings. The New Testament usage of saint, or holy one, just means any Christian. Second, a saint might be an especially holy Christian. For instance, in early Christian tradition, they emphasized martyrs, people who had been killed because they refused to be disloyal to God and to Jesus. Or a saint might be a confessor, someone who was persecuted for their faith but not killed. Or a saint might be a holy virgin, someone who dedicated themselves to a celibate life for the sake of God. Or a hermit, or a monk, or a nun. The strictest mean of saint is an officially canonized holy person. This is a person who, after their death, who's been officially recognized by the church and who may therefore be publicly venerated. Veneration of saints plays a big role in Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox life. There are patron saints of churches, patron saints of countries, of certain activities, such as travel or being a doctor. And These saints can hear your prayers and they can pass them on to God. And in many contexts, people just straight up ask the saints for help rather than asking the saints to talk to God for them. In these traditions, saints may be venerated and honored, but not worshipped or adored. There's a distinction drawn in the tradition between two kinds of honoring. This kind is appropriate to people and to God. And this kind is only appropriate to God, and so can't be given to people. If you were to worship saints with this kind of worship, that would be a sin of idolatry. But this type of practice is not viewed as idolatry. That is, not as a sin. If you define idolatry purely descriptively, as we did when we were talking about Hinduism and Buddhism, then this is idolatry. It's treating a physical object in the way that you would treat an honored person. You light a candle in front of it. You may bow to it, clasp your hands before it, gaze upon it, basically pray to it, or rather pray through it, to the saint that it represents. Here you can see a couple of women in an Eastern Orthodox church in America. And note that they have the traditional head coverings, and one of them is kissing an icon, a two-dimensional picture of Mary. And she's doing it because she believes it'll have some special benefit to her. There are representations, whether three-dimensional statues or two-dimensional icons and pictures, which are viewed as especially holy and as conferring special benefits. Since at least the third century, and possibly even a little before then, the most popular saint has been Mary, the mother of Jesus. In fact, the mainstream tradition outside of Protestantism says that not only can she be given veneration, but she can be given more than veneration. In Greek, veneration is the word dulia, and Mary can be given hyperdulia. Since at least the early 400s, and probably somewhat before that, Mary has been honored by the title in the East, God-bearer, which in the West is usually translated as the mother of God. Back in the day, this was controversial. Some Catholics argued that one should not call her Mother of God, but Mother of Jesus or Mother of Christ. But the majority view is that Mother of God is a perfectly good title. Again, there was controversy about the honoring of images and relics, but that controversy was resolved in favor of preserving those practices. Specifically, these practices were affirmed at the Second Council of Nicaea in the year 787. Protestants don't do this. While they highly regard Mary as a faithful and good servant of God, and somebody who played an important role, they don't honor her in this way, or the other saints. Some Protestants ignore this practice by Catholics and Eastern Orthodox, some consider it a little unseemly, and some outright denounce it as Christian idolatry. On a practical, everyday level, this is one of the biggest differences between the many, many kinds of Protestantism and the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox traditions. Traditionally, there was a very full Christian year, a calendar full of holidays and saints' feast days. This has been reduced in modern times. Here we'll just mention the two most important Christian holidays. The first is Christmas, the celebration of the birth of Jesus. In the West, this is December 25th. It celebrates not only the birth of Jesus, but the incarnation of God, that is, God becoming human. The other most important Christian holiday celebrates the resurrection of Jesus. It's Easter Sunday, which occurs in March or April. In connection with that, there's Good Friday. The Friday before that, the day of Jesus' crucifixion by the Romans. In our next and last segment, three recent influential Christians.